Welcome to the Schmoville Podcast. My name is Ryan Snelling. We're talking about Christian, Mark, all the other people involved with Schmozno, with Collider Video, and I could not be more happy to have RB3 back. Everyone welcome him back to the podcast. Woo-woo! Thank, thank you guys for having me. It's a real privilege to be here uh, once again. Let me just say that the first time you were on, it was me, you, and Paul, and we could tell you were nervous. I thought you did fine, but we could tell that you were nervous. And, you know, we've seen you blossom on the live show. And I, I say it every week on Smovo Podcast. I think Christian says it enough. Everyone knows that you are killing it with everything that you were doing over there. You're killing it on the mic, the videos that you make. So let me just say, if you haven't heard it enough already, thank you very much for doing all the work that you do because you've been kicking a lot of ass. So we appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I think I think last time it was a combination of me being excessively nervous. And, uh, we, you know, uh, last time we were also chatting at like 8 o'clock in the morning. So uh, that's true. At, yeah. LA time. So it was a little... I was a little, I was a little tired, and it was also too, you know, if you get me talking about movies, I could talk far more articulately than articulately than compared to talking about myself or personal stuff. So I understand that. You know, I have terrible nerves sometimes too, so I totally get it for sure. But I mean, do you do you feel better now? I mean, you feel more comfortable. You feel more loose. You ready to get down on the podcast? Yeah, I feel loose. I feel. Suicide Squad, Enchantress, Luke. <laughs> well, um, so. well, well, that's good. I am sorry that I did not bring in my co-host, Brian Davids, back sooner. What's up, buddy? Snelling, I've been fostering and cultivating relationships all week, and I'm excited to begin the weekend here in Schmelke. <laughs> what a great segue, because I want to talk about how happy I am that we got so many engagements from fans and I think a lot of people are happy that you're here joining me as well but I do want to say thank you so much to all the people who who tweeted at us messaged us um, commented on the YouTube post from last week you guys have been awesome Uh, my favorite comment by far though was the guy who said that the word cultivated should be banned from this podcast and I like how you are taking a stance early on and not going to let that stand right Look, I went back and, and re-listened to last week's episode, and I like the word choice, but yeah, I did say it a bit too much. But I did mix in some fostering, some developing, some built-in last week, so point taken. I cannot believe you had the time to go back and listen to that podcast, because it was a mammoth and I'm I'm glad because I'm glad Christian was happy. He said that our podcast is now great, not good. That puts a lot more pressure on us though, you know? I did more preparation this week than I've done yet, so hopefully I didn't over-prepare. We'll see, though. Time will tell. Last week, it took me seven hours to prepare that damn podcast when you consider all the technical issues we had. Last week's podcast was three separate podcasts edited into one, and it was a nightmare, but we got it done. We appreciate all the nice... Um, the the feedback from everybody. Thank you so much. RB3, you were here because... I essentially messaged you immediately after the live show last night, and I actually want to talk about this right out of the gate if you're down. Do you know what I'm about to ask you? I think I have an idea. Did you really die for your son? Stop. (laughs) This isn't James Earl Jones. This is RB3. That was an amazing line, by the way. My goodness. (laughs) What I actually (laughs) wanted to ask him, Brian, was give me the backstory And this might go into a further discussion with Finstock in general, and then we'll get right back on track with what this podcast does. Give me some backstory. What the hell was going on with the with the shoes and the and the lady that Finstock brought? Just give me the rundown if you can. Are your feet really size thirteen? I am a size thirteen, and I think the thing with Finstock is me and Finstock talk a lot off camera about a lot of things, you know. And I particularly poke him a lot about his 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 eases because he he wears them a lot, you know. Uh, from the time I've worked there, I even have a little behind the scenes video where I'm showing them off. So I'm like, okay, Finstock, you, you keep bringing these around. You know, I'm a big Kanye West fan. I'm a big shoe fan. Uh, I mean, you guys probably don't know this, but I have like three pairs of Jordans in my closet right now, 
uh, that I have on my top shelf. It, so for me, I'm always like, you know, Finstock, are you ever, are you ever going to hook up some shoes for me? You know, because you're always coming in here with these nice shoes. You say you have the hookups. You know, you're always off shooting some Drake videos or whatever. So, you know, I, um, so I, you know, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to hook me up or, or something? And, you know, I, and over this time, I've kind of teased them, you know, yeah, we're a size 13, this and that. Um, so when I get to the show on Thursday, he's like, hey, bro, I got something for you. I'm like, what do you, what do you have for me? And uh, he, said, uh, he said, I have a surprise for you. We're gonna do, I'm going to present them to you on camera. Uh, and then he, he said, I, I have a very beautiful girl that is going to come and we figured it all out. It's in the budget. <laughs> like, the budget? What are you talking about, man? And then, um, so I'm like, yeah, it was like a mild surprise. But I think by the time I was on camera, I actually kind of realized what they were going to be. But uh, yeah, so I mean, that's kind of that's kind of like the immediate backstory behind it. What's the name of the company? Well, they're Adidas, but you know, easy, Adidas. Yeah, yeah, easy shoes. Um, you know, they're they're not they're very limited stock, so th- those could go pretty high um, off the market and stuff like that. So I just want to say, Miss Brittany, his manager for the night, lovely gal, the worst Instagram handle I've ever heard. <laughs> Why? It's her name. What are you talking about? But it was like uh, it was like underscore this, underscore that. It was very complicated. I'm not. It was one underscore, Brian. No, no. It was, I think there was two underscores. I swear there were multiple underscores. You are really showing your age right now. How old are you, kid? Thirty. I'm a 33 year old kid. Yes. <laughs> Christian called you a kid, right? I feel young again. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> I just want to say, if you look, if you look her up on Instagram, she has like 30,000 followers and she's like followed by Snoop Dogg and a bunch of models and, it, <laughs> and again it makes me question okay, now I'm gonna get hassled all week and again it makes me question what Finstock does in his professional life because I have no idea so yeah, even no, RB3 doesn't know interesting yeah that's compelling I want to talk about what we did briefly RB3 the uh, fan schmo down that we did together um, because I thought it was just worth pointing out. It's up right now. If you go on Twitter and look up Harvey Dreyer, uh, his Twitter handle is at Harv Dreyer. This kid asked RB3 and I to be on this little fan uh, schmo down that he did. And I think it's up on YouTube right now. You'll find it on his Twitter. RB3, I'm not going to spoil the match, but he knows his stuff. And he is a, a, a huge Stanley Kubrick aficionado and i was very impressed with your knowledge that was a lot of fun to do with you man and uh yeah go check that out and i'm just glad that we're kind of getting to know each other uh, a little bit better since the last time we had you on the podcast yeah yeah that was a very fun uh fun match and and everything and uh but what a lot of people don't know is that me and schnelling actually talk a lot uh to each other on uh on twitter anyway um whenever you send me a show to upload so I think <laughs> I was gonna say I hope I hope that's not all you think of me. I'm just the guy that bothers you. Like, hey, do you mind to put the podcast up today? Because uh, RB3 has put up every single episode of Schmoville on the YouTube channel for me. So, um, thank you for doing that. I I hope I tell you enough. I appreciate it. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> all right, Brian. I know you want to talk about Collider. Uh, let's talk about some stuff that went down. I don't have a whole lot to say really, other than it was a, another great another great week of programming for once i actually watched jedi council and usually jedi council is the one that i have to sacrifice weekly because i'm busy on thursdays i only really have time to watch the live show um just a little fun fact his guest that uh he had for jedi council this week was um andy gutierrez from uh lucasfilm and the star wars show just a fun fact this is an extremely small world because my sister's boyfriend is Andy's cousin. Oh. Huh. Yeah, I just thought that was crazy because I found out at a really funny time. It was like around, it might have been like Christmas or something, and my sister's boyfriend was over, and I was actually watching Star Wars Rebels. And I know it sounds like I'm making this up, but I'm not because I was showing Star Wars Rebels to my young nephew. And 
my sister goes, oh yeah, uh, my boyfriend's cousin works for Lucasfilm, and I looked her up, and like Rebels Recon showed up on YouTube, and then obviously she was at Celebration, and I just thought it was hilarious. It's such a small world that I have an- yet another connection to this space. Um, but anyway, that's kind of just shitty information. Uh, Brian, I know you want to talk about Collider. What do you got? Well, Dennis Zen teased a big announcement coming on Monday in regards to Collider Video. I've got some predictions based on John Campia having some reviews on the Collider Video feed the past couple weeks. He also guest hosted when Jeremy Johns was in town. So I'm calling it now. John Campia is coming back, maybe not full time, but he'll be back most of the time since it really... It never made sense why he had to do a a clean break from movie talk when he could just go to more of a part time status. So I think we're going to get Campia back in action. Well, the, I mean, the break from movie talk was the uh, was well for one he wasn't wanting to work there full days in general, and that's why he he thought that the Comic Con HQ would be just a lighter load in general. And and part of the uh, fact that he didn't do movie talk, I think, plays into the fact that he was just preparing for film HQ and like getting that going and figuring out who his team was going to be. So I, t- I totally get why he left Collider for sure. Um, I don't but know given all the stuff that he's doing on his personal YouTube channel. I yeah. kept saying to myself, why isn't he just doing this for Collider video? He's still employed by complex. Any, any way they can grow Collider video is a win win for everybody, whether it's film HQ, which is, presented by Collider or the Collider video feed itself. So it makes no sense for him to be doing stuff on the side when he can be doing it for the actual Collider video feed. I'm not going to assume that RB3 knows this, and I actually prefer if we just save the announcement for when they talk about it on Collider, whenever Dennis feels the need to give us this information. But RB3, I mean, how would you feel about Campia coming back to Collider, if that was the case, if Brian is correct? That would be really dope. Um, I think he's a really smart, intelligent guy. He is definitely a professional when it comes to uh, talking movies and commentating about movies. And Film HQ is just him continuing to demonstrate his abilities. And, uh, you know, I mean... It's, it'll be a logical progression. His offices are still at Collider, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, he, he does a lot of work there, and uh, he still interacts a lot with those guys. He still comes on Jedi Council or Heroes and all that kind of stuff. So uh, if, if he is returning to Movie Talk, I think that could be a very um, kind of nice return to um, what a lot of us became familiar with him from in the first place. So... I keep imagining this this picture in my head. Remember how Han Solo, when he reunited with the Falcon in The Force Awakens, he's kind of, he went into the, uh, I don't know, co- the cockpit, if you will, and he kind of looked around, he kind of touched the seat and looked at it all fondly. I think when Campia came back for Jeremy John's week, I think he had one of those moments like Han had in The Force Awakens, where he, he looked at his former chair, he looked at the cameras, he looked at the set, and those feelings came back to him. So you think it happened that quick? But I mean, RB three did say that his offices are still there. So well, I don't know. I don't know if it's as pretty as the Han Solo discovering the Falcon. But right. But actually, being on the show, driving in the cockpit—that's that's a flying in the cockpit. That's a whole different. That's a whole different sure. thing. So the actual act of doing it brought him back. And that. And just go back to my original question. I I would just be really surprised if it came from that because it was such a quick transition. And you know, there's been a lot of talk since Campia left about which is better, post Campia Collider or Campia Collider. And for them to make that big of a decision, is it a big of a, am I overthinking it? Is it a big decision to bring John Campia back or will it be like cuz a lot of things have changed. Um, or will it be like he never left? What do you think, RB3? Um, I, I feel like you'll still have a pretty uh, sizable place um, on Movie Talk and, and, and do collider activities. I do feel like he, um, even while he was gone, I, um, I feel like the format of the show is, well, while slightly different, I, I feel like it's relatively, it still allows space for him to reinsert himself into the conversations. So I don't feel like there will be much of a 
a kind of distraught or a kind of um, disconnect when he comes back. I feel like the chemistry is still there. I feel like uh, the people are still there. It's, you know, it's a different, slightly different crew and a slightly different energy, but I feel like that's still a welcoming environment for him to uh, be in. So, If Campion never left, I don't think we would have all the new shows that we have. Since he left, we got TV talk, we got nightmares, we got trailer reviews. I don't think he would have done some of these things had he stayed on. So the fact that he left allowed us to get new programming. And now that he's coming back to the channel, we're, we're still going to have that programming, most likely. Also, one more thing. Dennis did say that we will get some TV recaps back in the fall. He wouldn't elaborate on which ones, but there will be there will be a few of them. So, Snelling, you can uh, calm down slightly on the TV recaps thing because we are getting a few, quote unquote. I was going to say, that's the one thing I think Christian is out of his mind when it comes to uh, needing TV recaps. I, I understand the point of overworking the staff, but uh, I don't know. I'm excited to see what happens. I'm not saying I'll, I'll take credit, but hopefully they'll implement some of my ideas. And I, I, would, I would just love to see it. I think that would be in everybody's benefit over there. So uh, that'd be awesome. I think if Camp B comes back, I don't think it'll be in the same manager. Um, it won't be in the same position that he was in before. I think it'll be just as a correspondent, or sure. as, as, a, as an on-screen correspondent, as opposed to uh, being the director of studio operations or being uh, the director of development as Christian or Dennis is. So. And sure, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, Comic-Con HQ is still a thing and Film HQ is still a thing. And as far as I know, it's successful. So even even if you're correct, Brian, I never once thought that like that meant that Comic-Con HQ or excuse me, Film HQ was compromised. So, yeah, I agree with RB3. I think that's sort of what he would do. So. Well, I don't, I don't think he would come back in a way that would cause Dennis to lose his current status. So I think he's coming back in a way where Dennis keeps his current position and John is just a guest correspondent type thing. Sure. Kind of a like a regular panelist, you know, two days, two, three days a week. So uh, Dennis is still the head of it like John used to be. And this allows him the time, though, to still do Film HQ. Right. For sure. Okay, what were you going to say? Top 10? I want to talk about the Top 10 show for a quick moment. And I, I have kind of a thought based on the recent success of the seven fave hashtag craze. And I, it's the one show that I, I have the most difficult time connecting with. And it seems like a show that would be really fun to partake in and actually go through the list with somebody that I enjoy talking to and come up with a a common list between the two of us. However, as a viewer, I have a tough time being engaged with it because I don't get to participate like we did with the seven fave hashtag. So I wish there was a way to where they could announce the topic. All the viewers submit their list, their top 10 during the week and then based on all of those user submissions, they come up with a user top 10 based on all the submissions that were made. And that way they come up with their top 10 and they compare it to the user top 10. The technology exists somewhere. Something would have to tally everybody's votes, everybody's top 10, depending on the topic. But that way we're able to engage a bit more like we did with the seven fave hashtag, which... The whole fun of it was everybody participating and comparing their lists. I, that's that sounds like a headache for them to sift through all of that. And I mean, if there's some kind of like, well, that's list. what I'm saying. There have to be technology to facilitate it. I'm not saying that Nos should count up every user's vote for Tombstone being the the best Western of all time. Obviously, it would have to be efficient, but. I feel like I, I'm not able to engage in the same way that they're engaging with each other. And it's no knock on the, the hosts. They have great chemistry. They are, they're great in their own right. But for someone who's watching, I'd be more interested if my feedback was somehow factored in comparison to theirs, which is why that hashtag was so successful. So th the thing about the top 10 show for me is it falls into the category, and I've talked about this before on here, m some of my favorite content 
from Collider and Schmoes, though, is when they're actually educating me as a movie fan. I think I know a lot about movies. RB3 might say I know not very much about movies, but I... I like just being educated and hearing about things that I don't really know about. And the thing about Top 10 is that they talk about a lot of movies, and very well, I might add, to uh, very in-depth discussion, surprisingly, on Top 10 show, uh, considering how short it is and how many things they have to get to. I just like being educated on movies that I might not have seen. And I think it also has a lot to do with just being Roka and no show. So it never really bothers me that I'm not engaging because I don't need to really engage with every single little thing I watch. Um, I don't know. That's where the entertainment value comes in for me, though, is the fact that they're either reminding me or teaching me about new movies that I need to um, to watch for the first time. So RB3, how do you feel about uh, Top 10 Show? Or Brian's idea, rather. Uh, I think that's a really good idea, actually. I never, I never actually thought of that. Um, Thanks, Robert. Yeah, no, I think that is it. <laughs> that is that. that, that. <laughs> well, um, I mean, you know, but I think, I think if uh, John Roker and Matt Nose are listening to this, they should, they should really consider that. But like, I mean, honest to God, that's because you know, I, I've always, I've always enjoyed the Top Ten Show, even when it was just the audio podcast on the. Um, on the Shmo's No Network feed. Uh, and they always put out some really great content, in my opinion. And that, I think that, um, I think the, you know, I think the video format uh, changes it up a lot. Uh, I'm not, the jury's still out on whether it's for the best or for the worst. Um, I, I personally still really enjoy their show. Um, and I think, I just think, I'm not sure if it's, whether or not they're being handicapped by the new releases of that particular week or by the, or by, I don't know, I don't know what, but I, I haven't really found their topics so far since they moved to Collider to be like particularly interesting. For example, like top 10 epics, that's kind of, you know, that's a very broad spectrum of, and they had, you know, granted they had a very broad spectrum of movies included on that, but. I do feel like that is a large that that's kind of too broad of a of a I don't know. All I'm saying all I'm saying is look at how successful that hashtag was because everybody got to participate in that hashtag. So there's got to be a way to incorporate that into that show, which is essentially doing the same thing every week. And you know, well, let me just revise what I said a little bit. I I don't mean it harshly that I hate your idea. I think you hurt my feelings. Now I'm sorry. What I want to say is that it just never once crossed my mind. Now RB three's got a good point that maybe that the the weekly topic kind of hinders them a little bit because Roka even said on this week's episode like we need to definitely do a top 10 Van Damme movies along the way and I'm like when are you ever going to do that when is there going to be a new Jean-Claude Van Damme movie to come out to warrant you doing a top 10 now if you didn't have that stipulation where it like pertains to the weekend movie then you could do the top 10 Jean-Claude Van Damme movie but but even with the epic episode they kind of just invented and I don't think they're far off base, but they kind of created what they considered an epic, and they talked about it right then, right there. So I don't know if the topics need to be more detailed or or what, but that that is something to consider, and I like that you brought that up. But to to kind of complete my thought on what Brian was saying, I just I'll say that I've never felt the need to really change it up in that way. Um, I don't know if I really care for cutting to Cody drawing on a dry erase board for the top 10, but um, I don't know. That's just me. Snelling, my shoe size is 10 and a half, just so you know. I wear 11, so suck it. I was, I, um, just so you know. I just wanted to say, though, I mean, you know, well, Brian, Brian's idea, that could actually lead to some interesting potential in terms of uh, some Twitter uh, trending kind of, kind of, you know, uh, motions to really help promote the show as well so or you know facebook or twitter or any social media kind of trends robert i like where your head's at everybody likes what brian wants to do everyone thinks brian's <laughs> the best thing since sliced bread for his son. he died for his son 
RB3 has a great point, though. Like, you're, you're absolutely right. You can get top 10 uh, hopefully trending on Twitter. That's, that's not a bad idea. So, uh, whatever. They don't have to incorporate it into the show, but they can always ask what people's top 10 uh, favorite epic movies are or what have you. Whatever. Just, uh, you know, with, with the whole thing, you, you kind of brought up the Van Damme thing. I kind of, because I was kind of thinking, you know, wouldn't it be interesting to do like a filmmaker's kind of series? You know, they already did Steven Spielberg, but what if we start hearing about top 10 Martin Scorsese? Do we have to wait until a Martin Scorsese movie comes out to them for them to talk top 10 Martin Scorsese movies? Or what about Spike Lee? I mean, Spike Lee, this is not going to have any major release movies coming out anytime soon or something, you know? So, I don't know. That's kind of why I, what I kind of was. Uh, that's why the whole thing about doing it based on a movie that's coming out that particular week is a little uh, is a little disheartening to me as a movie fan, only because we kind of have to wait until, until you know this happens or that happens to have a a, a topic. Well, I like I like the idea of getting input from people on Facebook and saying, hey, what kind of list would you like us to do? And maybe considering one of those lists. Um, if, like, they don't necessarily like... Like, if they continue to do the the idea of just providing the topic based on what's coming out that weekend, they can continue to do that, but say, hey, if you'd rather see something else, go ahead and throw it at us. And then they could consider that. Um, I don't know how much time they actually spend on these lists. I would say it's probably difficult, especially if you want to watch something, certain movies before taping that show. Um, I'd love to talk to Roca about that, and maybe we'll get him on and discuss that. But uh, I don't know. All of this, I guess, just depends on what they're able to do with their schedules. So, Just to play devil's advocate, because I understand Robert's point, but at the end of the, but at the, end of the day, Collider is a news site, and so... They kind of have to stay current with what's trending, given what their brand is, which is entertainment movie news. So I see it both ways. But yeah, I can see how if you are a fan of the old format, how the new format might be frustrating. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what we've all been waiting for. The championship match of the movie trivia showdown between Dan Merle and Clark Wolf. RB3, were you present at the filming of this showdown? Uh, no, I wasn't. They kind of wanted a like a small, um, like a small crowd, so uh, I I I, um, I didn't go. That was my act- That's the question I was leading into: is if you could tell me why there was less of an audience. So was that because Dan and Clark were just taking it very serious? They didn't want any distractions from the crowd at all. Well, you know, when when it comes to those uh, crowds, that you know, they could get pretty big. And I know the last one that Dan Merle did with, against Mark Riley, uh, they had a huge crowd. So, I think it's more of a thing of you know, th- uh, going under those hot lights and seeing all those people in the audience is just like it, it, it could get kind of nerve wracking. So I think both Dan and Clark just wanted something a little smaller. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm sure they had the Collider crew there watching Ezekiel in the background or, or John Roca and stuff like that. So, But I think for the most part, uh, they wanted to keep it pretty small, pretty concise, just just to kind of lower the nerves of the competitors. Sure. Uh, I just quickly want to say, and then I'll go to you, Brian, um, that this Schmodown, I mean, the Schmodown in general has has forced me to express so many emotions, usually happiness, a lot of frustration. But I think this Schmodown in particular, for the first time, presented heartbreak for me. Brian, do you feel the same way? Yeah, I was very disappointed. It started out well, but in round two, everything went sideways for Clark Wolf, quite literally. So... It was uh, very disappointing. Everybody was rooting for her. And and Dan Merle, he's not flashy. He's a very meat and potatoes type of guy. (laughs) But man, the guy is as reliable as it gets in these games. Yeah, I mean, I was super surprised. Not that Dan Merle wasn't a contender. I mean, obviously, he has the belt. But the fact that he just knew so many the first round i thought was incredibly difficult like yeah. both both batches of questions were very very hard and like uh 
they had a question about the Page Master and a bunch of other like obscure movies. I mean, they were really testing their knowledge with the Smodown. I mean, rightfully so. I mean, it is for the matchup. But you know me, I've been rooting for Clark Wolf since day one. I thought it was part of her destiny to take this belt from Dan. And it just broke my heart. I mean, she was in there at the end of round one. It was five to four, Dan Morrow. But again, like it started slipping. Um, I don't know. In round two, that sideways question sent her stumbling. She got the next right. question yeah. about Jane Seymour. But then that Barbara Streisand question came on. And it was it was the floodgates opened at that point. I mean, she she couldn't even think of Ben Affleck's first directorial effort. I know I mean, that's right? how stuff that she knows, stuff that we know she knows, she wasn't getting. RB three, who did you pick to win going into the match? Go, going in, I thought it was going to be Clark Wolf. Back when back when the the match was first announced, but over time, Dan Merrill was winning me over. Uh, not just because of you know his his match with Mark Riley, but through his movie fights, uh, not not just through him participating in movie fights, but through his his fact checking has got a lot more. You could kind of feel like a little difference in the way he was approaching things. And I just feel like the Schmodown really he he had the right energy, he had the right stuff for the Schmodown going forward. So, uh, but I will say though, with that sideways question. Uh, I feel like that was the point where it starts to turn sideways. But not only that, I do feel like the wording for that particular question was just kind of off. So, so Agreed. like they're, they're asking uh, what was their? I think the question was roughly around what are the two main characters' goals in the film. But the question was worded in such a way that it even threw me off because my initial answer was wine testing, wine tasting as well. But Look like the way the question was worded. I'm like, well, wait, is there, there is a particular moment where in this film where they needed to do something else? And so for me, I would have went right. multiple choice too. But then as soon as they said wine testing, in my mind, I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, of course that's the, so. I don't know. I feel like that particular wording of that question was indicative of the kind of stressfulness uh, or and the type of uh, the kind of stress and the kind of tension that was played out throughout that battle and it was indicative in the in the words and the and the wording and the questions and the categories because n- neither of the competitors had their normal you know categories like that you know there was no Sandra Bullock movies for um for Clark there's no horror movies for Clark there were no um there are no Steven Spielberg was there Steven I don't even think there's a Steven Spielberg category in the world for Dan there wasn't an Oscar winners uh category in the world for Dan so it was, you know, they yeah, no Dan. Dan actually did get Oscars. Oh, he did. But okay, okay. What was interesting? Okay. Yeah, Dan actually got Oscars, but he also got sports. Was going into he wasn't very confident, and as soon as he he spun the wheel and got that, I mean, I I thought he was going to do horrible that round, and he ended up getting lucky and still pulling off sports. But I think Clark's loss is mainly because of her nerves. Because after that, she was just making silly mistakes. And for some reason, I'm not at all convinced that Clark Wolf does not know Gone Baby Gone is Ben Affleck's first movie. She guessed his third. Like, she even skipped the town. She knows. Yeah, I was going to say, she 100% knows that stuff. I don't doubt that for a second. That's why I think it was all about nerves. And unfortunately... You know, this was, I don't know if you'd call this underwhelming, but I mean, there was a lot of, in my room at least, a lot of passion <laughs> coming out as we saw her fall and when it came to the score. So, also, you know that she's seen JFK at some point. I mean, not knowing that Gary Oldman played Lee Harvey Oswald, Oswald is very surprising. And even Ellis's face. Did you see Ellis the face that he made after she guessed Anthony Hopkins? Yeah. He thought yeah. he he looked like, "Are you serious? <laughs> like, did you really guess cuz Anthony Hopkins isn't even in JFK at all, is he?" No, I, I swear that sideways question threw her off. She was focused yeah. in round 1. You could tell she was on point, but that one question just threw her off her game completely. Then the speed round. Yeah. He, Killed her even more, so she was done by the time, the, by the time that question rolled around. The speed around. round is really interesting in general because now that you have the buzzer, I, I like the idea of the buzzer, by the way. But I mean, that caused a lot of 
premature answers. So like, and you know, premature. Obviously, the goal is to answer before the right. other person. But I'm talking in particular about a question that says, "Which movie starring Sam L. Jackson and Bruce Willis? Why would you immediately guess there? Because there's there's right. several movies that." star both of those people so you obviously needed to listen a little bit more so I, and who played rufus in bill and ted's excellent adventure she right. thought they were talking about the movie instead they were talking about george carlin the actor that one i that one i get a little bit more because i think that plays into the fact that she was trying to answer before but dan i mean that's just a question you need to kind of hear a little bit you know what i mean but i mean that's what the speed round does i mean it, it kind of uh, makes you jumpy um, and I mean, yeah, round four at the end of round four, it was 11 to three. Um, at that point, I thought Dan pretty much had it. So it was, it was a heartbreaking loss for, for Clark. I, I'm not angry that Dan kept the belt because I don't think he was a sore winner about it. And I, again, I don't think this is a true testament as to how much Clark knows. It, it just sucks. Um, so let, let me just ask you, did you all hope that Dan would go into the tournament with the belt? Are you happy with his, with his decision, RB3? Uh, yeah, I think, I think that it's actually a good idea um, to, for him to wait, for him to go all the way until December to have the ultimate, uh, to have the ultimate Shmo down finale, uh, for lack of a better word. And I think that really, I think that's, the best play because it really does allow for a top contender to crawl through the ranks and get to the top to to, to fight him, you know. So I, it'll be it'll be less of an event. It'll be less exciting if he competed week to week uh, in the tournament. And I think it's it's a really good decision on his part to just wait it out, see who see who comes out on top, face the winner, and that'll just make his his belt worth even more. So, Brian. If I was Dan, I would absolutely wait until December. But as a viewer, I wish that he was in the tournament. Totally agree. Totally agree. Because I feel like he's just doing what Thanks, he's trying. <laughs> there you go. Now we're on the same page. Um, I think he's just doing what he does at movie fights. It's never. It's not really fun when you just keep the belt. And I understand his philosophy. Again, I agree with you. But... There's just it's just not as entertaining as it could have been with the belt being passed around, in my opinion. Um, I would have liked to have seen Dan truly test how good he is throughout the entire tournament. So I don't know. I'm a little bit disappointed. I hate that he pulled a Dan Merle, but whatever. I it's gonna be fun either way, so flaunt those belts. Right? I know. He's getting a little maybe he's just getting a little cocky, I guess. So the the beginning of the ultimate movie trivia schmo or the ultimate schmodown tournament starts next week, correct? And what's the first match out of the gate? I think it's Christian and, and uh, Roca. I think that's who do you who do you got RB three between those two? Now that for me that's one of the closest match matchups of the uh, ultimate trivia schmodown. Uh, for me, that's I mean they were a neck and neck with each other. I. I'm just gonna give the slight edge to Christian, the very slight edge, because um, I mean, Roka knows his stuff, but I mean, Christian, I don't know, it's t- it's tough. They, they, you know, it's, yeah, I'm going for Christian. I'm just going for Christian. I'm going with Kid Christian, my main man. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with Christian too, because I'm just Team Schmoes, at least OG Schmoes. Um, you know, I agree. I think it's extremely close. Roka obviously knows a shitload about movies and obscure movies. When you hear him talk about the the things that get brought up on top ten, I mean, extensive movie knowledge. But I gotta go with Christian. It's gonna be a hell of a match, and I hope to God that they play this shit up. Like these two know that people love the shit talking with the schmodown, and I cannot wait to see what next week brings us when it comes to those two so i i'm just extremely excited overall for the entire tournament and that's a hell of a way to bring it in for sure let me bring up something what was this evidence of the show being taped i mean we know they're taped but during the post-game wrap-up interviews roca brought up andy signore and how he would be getting dan spot in the tournament since Dan opted not to play in the tournament. 
However, it's since been announced that Andy couldn't partake in the tournament. So was this evidence of this episode being pre-taped, which it was, or is this a, a new development that Andy is actually coming back to play in Dan's spot in the tournament? I think it's 100% the fact that it was taped, and I think it just got lost in the editing of it. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, I mean, that's how I take it. RB3, do you see it the same way? No comment. <laughs> RB3 is like, yeah, I edited the video. I accidentally left it in. No, but anyway, I'm ready to get into the Schmoes No live show, number 247, this fall movie preview. Brian, your boy Mark Ellis was back in the house. Did he live up to your expectations? Are you glad he's back? Love seeing Mark back on the show. And it's funny seeing Mark in serious mode because Derek C. and France was in the house. It's funny when Mark has to act serious for a little bit because even when he's trying to be serious, he still sounds funny. And yet you can tell that he's trying to play it straight. And so I, I just love that that dynamic with Mark when the show gets uh, to a serious place. You were stupid excited for Derek C. and France being on the show this week. So... I think we can all say that that interview was just amazing, right? One of my favorite interviews the show has ever done, by far. It's pretty great. And that says a lot, because you, at least for me, I don't know about RB3, but you are more experienced in the history of the show. So I think that says a tremendous amount that you think that. Yeah, they've had some sneaky good interviews over the years. And I mean, the way he called himself a documentarian of fiction, the way he talked about wanting to capture flaws and imperfections and how he hadn't seen Michael Fassbender's heart on screen yet. That stuff is amazing to hear because it's such a unique perspective. I had so much interview envy and I I could have listened to them talk to him for two hours. I mean, the story about how they got the Metallica t-shirt in The Place Beyond the Pines, that was incredible. So, you know, when when Cian France was talking about filmmaking, he had this, this uncanny ability to make you look at your own self and question whether you appreciate something on the same level that he appreciates filmmaking. A 20-minute interview on YouTube was was inspiring, as corny as that sounds. And, and since he spends months on set with his actors, I now understand how he gets the best performances possible out of A-list actors like Gosling, Cooper, Michelle Williams. Creating an experience is something that, that great directors like Nolan and Cassavetes are known for, but when you hear C in France talk about blindfolding Alicia Vikander to capture her honest reaction to seeing a lighthouse for the first time, it makes you understand why the greats go to such lengths. In fact, I was so inspired by this interview that I'm actually wearing a blindfold during this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Look, I, dude, I, I hear you, man. I mean, I loved it. And I, I am a huge fan of Place Beyond the Pines. I have not seen Blue Valentine yet. Oh but I was, I was still anticipating this interview. And you know what, Brian? They could have talked to Derek San France for two hours had the live show been a daily show. But RB3, calm you're down, actually. Calm down. <laughs> RB3, you are actually an aspiring filmmaker. You are recording this very podcast from the University of Southern California. What was it like to be there in studio talking to this man about, you know, the things you love? Dude, it was beautiful. I mean, for just just going just going from the start when they first um, when I was first told last week that they're bringing in Derek C. France and for an interview, I. I mean, I almost lost it, dude. I, I'm such a big fan of Blue Valentine. Uh, I saw that movie. I didn't see it in theaters, but I saw it immediately when it came out. On, um, you know, this is before digital download, so it had to be on Blu-ray. Uh, I saw it, loved it, was infatuated with that movie, and then uh, and then was so excited for Place Beyond the Pines. Saw that in theaters, just blew my mind. One of my favorite movies of. 2013, one of my favorite movies of the past decade, really. And, it's awesome. It's and awesome. just and just getting to meet that guy, and, st- and he is the nicest person you will ever meet. I walked because when um, we're, you know, he kind of walked in. He 
he did like a little interview for Collider first and then uh, like literally right before the show started and then uh, came on the show for us. That's why he was only there for 20 minutes. Um, and I mean, I t you know, I, I kind of walked up to him. I was like, you know, I'm, my name is Robert. I'm, I'm, I'm a film student. I'm a big fan of your work. And he was like, Robert, Robert, it's great to meet you. He was super excited. He, you know, he was. And then um, when he started talking during his interview, you know, I was basically back there at the um, at the desk taking notes because it was just awesome. It was, awesome. He was. It was just. He was. It was so informational. Just in twenty minutes, how much beautiful uh, filmmaking uh, things he, he brought up. Just. Just for me, it was just one of the one of the great experiences uh, of working on the show. One of the great interviews they've ever had on the show. And those kind of interviews with filmmakers and producers are kind of the reason I fell in love with the Schmoes No Show in the first place. When, like I said, when I first joined, my favorite interview with the, the, the Schmoes ever did was with Max Landis. And then they had another great one with Lexi like Alexander, another yeah, great sure. one with Craig Brewer, another, you know, so all these, all the times they get to talk to these filmmakers and get to interact. And uh, like, like Schnelling always brings up, the opportunity to learn something. That's always what I find most fascinating. I think they brought it, the A-list status to this one. So, Yeah, I never really thought of it, that this is actually kind of a, a, a film school for you in its own way. So that's, that's pretty cool that you got to talk to him, even behind the camera. I think that's awesome you got to talk to him. Um, Brian, I, I know you thought it was probably pretty weird that it this just happened like right out of the gate in the episode, right? Wasn't that kind of weird? Like there was like hardly any introduction. It was just Derek Sanfrance. Yeah, it was kind of weird that they introduced him right away. And that's when I kind of figured out, oh, he was probably there shooting something for Collider. Robert just sure. verified it. The, the thing that I hated is I watched this partially on YouTube at my computer. And so I saw the chat room and they were freaking the hell out that this was the beginning of the show. And the fact that it was quote, you know, taking so long, even though it was like a 20 to 30 minute interview. I just hate that. And I'm pretty sure didn't Christian have the laptop in front of him last night. Uh, I don't think it was on the chat. I think really it was only me and Mark Ellis was looking at the chat. Um, okay, but, well, I was going to say he definitely had the laptop in front of him because later on when Mance and Sasha were on and Christian just got bored, he was staring at his laptop. So. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to I kind of add to that. It, I mean, I was watching the chat, too, and it was, I, you know, there's a lot of good people in Schmoville who are commenting, and I watched the Facebook chat, too, and really the Facebook chat's the place to be. I mean, come on. But, uh, but when you watch, the, and me watching the live chat, it was just like, um, you know, you kind of notice people going off topic, people kind of talk. And it kind of brought me back to one episode of Movie Talk that I was listening to a, a while ago. And I believe they had the filmmakers of, of it was, they had filmmakers in, in the studio talking to them live and, and stuff like that. And they're bringing some insightful stuff to the table. And then all you see in the comments section, all you see in the, in the live chat were, uh, new Batman vs. Superman trailer drop. What are you guys going to talk about? What are you going to I was just, this is breaking my heart right now, you know, right? That was probably, it sounds like uh, that was the episode with John Hillcoat. Would that have been about the time? That, I think that, I think that, 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 that might have been it. Yeah, I think that was probably it. Because Triple Nine came out right before Batman v Superman. Right, right. And then they had just released a new trailer, and all you see in the chat room was, uh, all you see in the chat room were, uh, talk about the Batman v Superman trailer, talk about the Batman. I'm just, uh, I'm just, I don't know. For me, it's just like I, you know, a trailer is a trailer, but you you have the experience of talking to uh, a great filmmaker like John Hillcoat or a great filmmaker like uh, like uh, Derek Sinfrance or you know, for me, I'll take that over any any trailer any day of the week. So, uh, for sure, um, Brian, I know this is your boy. Did you have anything that you want to add before we move on? He looks like Ryan Gosling. We are okay. All right. Uh, I really wish Sasha. She said that tricks. She, I don't. I don't have any tricks. Sasha said that. Stop. Why are you digging at Chad Michael Collins again? <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> so. I really wish Sasha had actually asked him that Oscars question. She said that she refrained. I thought she did great, by the way. I don't really. 
I don't get to see Sasha interview anybody except for the Spills No Show, and obviously she does this for a living. But uh, I thought she was great, and she added an old whole other element to that interview, like she always does. So she's a super pro about that. Um, I think this falls in line with how somehow Brett has just become this little like his own inside joke or yeah. he's the he's the guy that they poke at because I cracked up at Brett's entrance sitting back down at the main table because he had to follow Derek Sanfrance <laughs> after that incredible interview and I just busted out laughing at the idea that we replaced Derek with Brett and Brett knew it and he was just having fun and I just cracked up at that um Seeing yeah. France really set the tone for this episode. It was a quieter episode until Finstock arrived, and it was a, <laughs> a, I mean, that's no no slight towards Finstock. It was just a quieter tone as there weren't that many people this episode. The Wanger table was less uh, rowdy this episode compared to last week, and uh, there's just a different vibe this week. And I think seeing France set the tone, and I think maybe if his fans watch the Schmoes No Show for the first time. Maybe they want to dial it back a bit for for this week, just because they had a, a different guest, a different uh, a different type feel for this week. Who knows? But but dude, you asked me right after the show. You asked me if I liked it, and I don't know if you want to get into more of a broad discussion of the entire episode. But I dug it, and I mean, I even mentioned a little bit last week how I was showing Collider to some of my friends, and they were just like, "There's way too much going on um, for a new." viewer new listener to handle and the fact that it was sort of like a a a minimal crew on the live show the fact that he set the tone i thought it was great not that i hated the finstock stuff i'm not saying uh, it's a bad thing yeah i know i i liked it i like the fact that there were less people on there so i really i love the interview i think my only issue and everybody knows i love the show but My only issue this week was with the fall movie preview, and I know it's a staple of the show, but it felt a little too, oh, I can't wait to see this, and oh, I can't wait to see this, as some of these movies we don't know a lot about. I mean, some of these movies don't even have trailers yet, so it it didn't have the depth that most of these broad topic conversations usually have. Oh, I'm going to go the other way on that. I mean, I think... I, I see what you're saying for sure, but I mean... The, the month of September, yes, because we've seen a lot of those trailers. But for the deeper months, we still haven't gotten a lot of of materials related to those films to really to really talk about them like they were hoping. That, that's all I'm saying. I'm going to go the other way just because I feel like... I, I totally get what you're saying. It's just a lot of like, oh, I want to see that. But it's... I mean, if anything, the Schmoes No Live show is going to be the first thing that... Uh, that I remember when, like, when I consider what when was the first time I heard about this movie, and I'll be like, oh yeah, they brought that up on the Schmoza live show. So the fact that this was a conversation starter for so many movies that I w- wasn't privy to otherwise, and I watched so many trailers after li- last night's show. So I definitely get what you're saying. Maybe there's not there's not a whole lot to it other than hey, I liked it or I'm excited for this. But wait, I wait definitely think. Hold that thought. Maybe because I'm too privy. Maybe because I'm. I've already done all this research. Maybe that's why it's not so informative to me. Well, probably. In your, in your case, though, in your case, it's it. It was the opposite effect because you, you're not current on a lot of these films. So, in that in that context, then it totally makes sense. I, for the first time, saw the Mon- a Monster Calls trailer last night due to the Smozno. Uh, live show and I think that was the only other trailer the only really new trailer Manchester by the sea I hadn't seen I didn't know the trailer was after that yet but I knew that that was a Sundance film but I mean this was a conversation starter for so many movies and it got me excited for the fall season RB3 are we overthinking all of this does Christian when he decides or when whoever decides what the topic is going to be is it really well thought out or is it always just going to be they're going to do what they want to do and the f- true fans will really appreciate it? I mean, is there a lot of thought going into this? Well, I think there is a lot of thought that goes into it, but I think, you know, I mean, I feel like there would have been no other better time to do the fall movie preview uh, uh, than, than, than it was today. So, I mean, than it was, um, you know, at the taping of the show because... There was so much, uh, you know, next week they're going to be having 
a lot of things to talk about are already be in September. We'll already be in September next week. So um, I think I think it was a good opportunity. But not only that, I think, you know, with having on Scott Mannis and having the Finstock thing at the end, it, it kind yeah. of added another interesting layer of these uh, movie preview shows that we're so used to. Um, because we never really, you know, I mean, usually the show is just here are these movies, here are these movies. But now I think, you know, they, they got to interject some energy in there with Scott. They had to, they got to do like this big kind of bold thing at the end with Finstock. So I think it was a really interesting approach. I, I kind of liken it to, you know, uh, 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 a movie in a way where a movie opens the first 15, 20 minutes are the smart, intelligent, kind of slow, but, you know, kind of, kind of the setup. Uh, and we see that with Derek St. France. And then it slowly builds, slowly builds. You add a new element in there, Scott Mans. You, you keep building, you keep building, you get, you know, you get to like this explosive moment where you see Finstock challenging Scott Mans to a slowdown match. And then, and all this other stuff. And, and, and it kind of falls back down to a, to a good place. So that's kind of how I likened uh, the show. I, yeah, I don't think there's any debate. I mean, there you have to have some kind of fall movie preview for the Schmozo Live show. And I see your point, Brian. Like, I'm, if you compare it to another episode, are you going to like this one as much as another one? No, probably not. But I don't think it, it says anything about the quality of the show that they did it. For, and I, I agree that there's, there's also still plenty of variety. The only, the one thing that was missing because it went st- directly to San France is that they just weren't, they weren't shooting the shit in the open. Opening. And with no everybody, to the future. there was no, yeah, there was no breath to the future. There wasn't a lot of just kind of chit chat, which I enjoy that aspect, but um, that was missing because even at Jedi Council, right before Ellis brought up the fact that a couple weeks ago, Christian was picking on him for choosing to work on his stand up instead of seeing John Williams in concert. And Christian even says on Jedi Council, we'll talk about that on the live show. And then they don't. So yeah. I don't know if. You know, plans changed or they just forgot or they didn't get to not that they forgot they obviously wouldn't forget to talk to each other but i don't know i i that was the one thing that i was missing from this episode was them kind of shooting the shit with each other so after seeing don't breathe today it would have been nice to have a little bit of conversation or, or more conversation about don't breathe given how good it is but the seasonal movie previews they've done them forever i get it and sometimes i got to remember that not every segment is meant for me. You gotta, you have to appeal to a broader audience, and a lot of the audience doesn't know about Manchester by the Sea or A Monster Calls, etc. Well, sure. I, I also say I, I think they didn't talk about Don't Breathe because they haven't seen it yet. Um, so they haven't reviewed it on their channel at least, and I know they're Good they're point. planning on um, watching it after the show. So. Well, the yeah, I think the only people that put up a review on the two channels were the the Nightmares crew, uh, I think. And Campia. It, oh, Campia did it too. Okay. On the Collider feed, that's I mentioned that earlier, but right, yeah. I just want to quickly mention no Miri on camera for the fourth time in five weeks. So just throwing that out there. You're overthinking it. Christian even verified. You know, you know how I like to start conspiracy theories, so just just throwing that out there. RB3, tell him to calm down. Mary Mi- is still executive producer. She is still executive producer. She was. <laughs> I know. Behind, I know. Behind but, me the whole time. But I like I like starting conspiracy <laughs> theories. That's all. RB3 said that to you like he's already addressed that issue so many times with other fans. Like, all right, get, just settle down, settle down. It's it's fine. Everything's good. Um, just quick bullet points, just some thoughts that I had while watching the fall movie preview. That's I, the worst story ever told on this show. I loved it. Oh my God. I laughed out loud at that. That was <laughs> phenomenal. Um, for one, I could totally call bullshit on Ellis supporting that movie storks. Like I, I get that they have a friend. <laughs> I just call bullshit. I get that Glickman is in the movie, but I, I think that that was a little bit of falsehood with that statement. Um, also thought it was hilarious how Ken. We talked about how Kim is Ken has kind of been disappointing when it comes to movie chatter lately. Uh, I thought it was hilarious how it just seemed like he wasn't going to see any of the movies that they were talking about, aside from Rogue One. Um, and I thought it was really important. And I, to my knowledge, I don't think Christian has addressed this at, at least in depth. I really wanted to hear Christian's thoughts on this Nate Parker thing, and I'm glad that they got to it because Christian. 
the only reason I was hyped up about Nate Parker, the only reason why I looked at him to be Green Lantern, the only reason why I was interested in Birth of Nation is honestly because of Christian. Because without Christian hyping him up this entire year, I would have had no idea that I was supposed to be paying attention to this guy. So I know that I was a little bit crushed. I know that Christian was definitely crushed. So I thought it was really important that they finally discuss that. Um, those are just some few bullet points before we get to Mance and Finstock. I don't know if you guys have anything you want to touch on. But you didn't see Beyond the Lights? I did not see Beyond the Lights. I just want to quickly point out uh, Ellis. Ellis was pretty on fire this episode. He had that great God, line. Yes. He had that great line about Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise ain't going to do something bad twice. He did Scientology once. The next religion he picks is going to get better. Hilarious line, albeit offensive. Never go back. <laughs> exactly. The, the never the go back stuff Jack was Reacher. great. Oh, my Jack, God. The Jack Reacher stuff in general was great. For, uh-huh. for sure. I mean, Including it was the f- worst story ever told. It was funny all around, I thought. I mean, there's a lot of good moments. Constantly cutting back to JTE just shaking his head was hilarious. <laughs> um Oh, by the way, we got to bring up RB3 because he really stuck it to us with his latest video. The video with them swearing, mocking the fact that we thought that there, there was a, a no cussing conspiracy. <laughs> RB3 created a remix video where they kept that going, you know, rubbing in, rubbing salt in our wounds, Snelling. Yeah, I, I'm okay with it only because it was funny and it was a great video. So kudos, RB3. That actually leads me to another I'm question. I'm outraged. Though. Well, no, I, I, I was just gonna say, the, I didn't make it to spite you guys. I, the reason I made it was because um, when they actually did it on the show, I had no idea that they did it. I was probably off getting some water or something, um, and I completely missed the whole bit at the beginning. So then, when I uh, the story behind that is when I came home, I, I, I you know I came home all excited. Mom, I won the uh, the the celebrity impression dating game. And I was getting ready to show the show. And the first two minutes, they break the fuck record of the year. <laughs> and, and my mom was just watching the show like, oh, my God, what am I listening to? So I, I was in tears when I watched it on the replay at home. So I just I had to make a video of it. Sorry, Mrs. Butler. <laughs> right, I was gonna say that's the new sorry, Mrs. Griffin. Sorry, Mrs. Uh, Griffin. Yeah, that actually that actually leads me to another question, and this is purely for for me. No one else is gonna be interested in this. Maybe Brian a little bit, but I'm very curious what the talk is about the Schmoville podcast behind the camera, if there is any. I don't know if it's crazy for me to assume that people aren't talking about us, but I'm very I'm very curious if there's any rumblings about this podcast. Christian's plug wasn't enough for you? You want to know what they're saying behind I'm, the scenes? Well, you know, with last week, Makuga and Sasha verified that there's a lot of off-air chit-chat that we don't know about. I'm just curious. I know Christian's very good to us on the show. RB3, what are you hearing out there? Anything? Um... Well, Christian says you guys blow ass, so I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm 100% joking. I'm, I'm so joking. But, uh, no. <laughs> I'm outraged. <laughs> oh, that was great. Uh, no, I'm, uh, <laughs> no, uh, Christian loves the show, man. I mean, he's always talking about, you know, man, those Schmoville guys. Like, he, he, he kind of does take some of the, the things you guys say, you know, kind of to heart sometimes. So, um, but, and, uh, I mean, obviously, he, he's told you this. He listens every week. So, um, he said, one thing he, he said off camera, though, is that he, he, he loves the fact that Brian has been watching since phase three. So, it kind of has a, a, good, a good balance between someone who's been watching since phase three and then someone who's kind of newer to the show, like you, you Brian. So it, it brings, so he, he likes that kind of uh, new dynamic uh, to the show as well. So The seasoned veteran and the rookie. <laughs> did you, now let's did get you? down to brass tacks. Robert, let's <laughs> get down to brass tacks. Was Josh McCuga suspended this week for his outburst against Umberto Gonzalez last week? Well, he wasn't on the show, so. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Uh, we talked a little bit about Fitstock already. By the way, hilarious. Oh, my God. And it was even actually better that the music... Were you in charge of the music? 
No, no, no. Cody, Cody was doing the music, but Cody. I just, okay. I, to get the to come out. I have no problem saying it because Cody messed that up so bad. But it was actually part of the h- hilariousness of him coming out. The fact that that woman was standing there. All of that was great. And we talked about it a little bit, but it was good to see Finstock be Finstock because there's been a lot of gray lately between Tom and Brian. And I wasn't actually sure. Why did that sound wrong? Is it Brian Finstock? Bob, Bob Finstock. Bobby Bob Finstock. Finstock. Thank you. Sorry. I was going to say that sounded wrong. That's why we have a veteran here to help clarify. Um, the fact that he was actually Finstock and not just like this gray, weird version where you see Tom Dagnino, but he transforms into Finstock. Uh, so that was really great. But I want to talk about Scott Mance only because I love Scott Mance. And we talked about it last week how, you know, Christian made this big announcement that he was going to be a part of the crew. What's funny though is that Christian said that he was joining the crew to. St- to start this new segment, Schmoography, if I remember that correctly. And the time that Scott Mance came back, they didn't even do that segment. So so what's what's the plan with Scott Mance, RB3? What's the latest on that? I mean, is he going to be from now on on the show weekly, or what's going on? Hold, hold the phone. Since the announcement, he has not been on the show since Christian announced that he would be part of the crew. That's correct. He has not been on the show. So this is the first time, and Christian pointed that out on this episode, that he has not been on since that announcement months ago. Right. But you seem to think otherwise. Am I, am I missing something? What the hell are you talking about? You made it sound like he's been on once since he was announced as a crew member, and I'm trying to say he has not been on. No, I this said— this is the first time— no, what I said was they promised that Scott Mance was coming to the show to offer this new segment. And then last night was the first time he came on, and then they didn't even do the thing, the reason behind him joining the team. Well, all I remember is Christian closed the episode with his Scott Mance impression. That's the only information that I think we've ever gotten on the air. I, that's the first time I've heard about any potential segment called Schmoography. Maybe you, maybe you got that from another show? Wait. I think I'm remembering Schmoville podcast. You've got a different show in mind. I'm thinking of the, the live show. He closed the episode, sang Scott Mance's name in his impression, and that's all the information oh, we got. Oh, what I'm remembering, ladies and gentlemen, is Christian telling me that bit of information on the Schmoville podcast. And if Brian was a true fan of this podcast, he would have known. Once again, Snelling, my shoe size is ten and a half. <laughs> You've been jerking me around all episode. That was a mess. <laughs> I'm so sorry for misunderstanding. <laughs> anyway, back to the original question. RB3, what's going on with Scott Mance? Um, I think Scott, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. I, when, when Christian first announced him, that was like in a very busy uh, point for all of us. That was you know before Comic-Con. We're all kind of getting ready, gearing up. And uh, Scott was very busy at the time, too, and he's still incredibly busy with everything that he does. So um, I'm not exactly sure if he is going to be there every week or I'm not I'm not I'm not entirely sure of the situation yet. But I'm, I'm sure as more information comes, uh, more will be provided. I like Scott Mance. Funny story, I still remember Scott Mance famously from the Critics' Choice Awards when Spotlight won a ton of awards. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And Rachel McAdams was the only one there, and so for some reason Scott Mance was sitting at the Spotlight table, so (laughs) every time Spotlight would win, you would see Scott Mance and his smiling face in every shot of Rachel McAdams, because he was sitting right there. So I just cannot get that image out of my mind. I remember that too. I remember laughing hysterically. It, so much Scott Mance was accidentally in the Critics' Choice Awards. I thought it was hilarious. Um, anyway, I guess the point is, we love you, Scott. We want you to come on, do the schmoography, listen to that episode of me and Christian on Schmoville, and Christian will explain it better than I could. Um, let's talk about the fact that Scott Mance is backing Roka in the Schmodown and he's essentially retired. He didn't accept Finstock's challenge. I think all of that sucks. 
I would have loved to see a Finstock Scott Mance Schmodown, and I hate to see Scott Mance backing Roka. That's just me, and I think I just think plain and simple. It that's how I feel. Brian, what do you think? Yeah, that was kind of a strange moment where Finstock comes out with this big introduction and he challenges Mance, and Mance is just like, "No, oh, sorry, I'm done." I mean, th- you you would think there'd be some communication beforehand. And so Finstock didn't know what to do after that. He was kind of stumbling as to what his next move was. I think he, I don't think he expected Mance to uh, reject his uh, his uh, challenge. Finstock got to the point where he was just like, okay, I'll take anybody. Christian, how about you? <laughs> and everyone was like, no, like, get out of here. <laughs> I think, I think Finstock should go up against RB3. And I know Christian is listening to this. Just, uh, you know, check out the fan showdown and, uh, you know, y- you might be impressed with what RB3 has got to offer. RB3, <laughs> would you accept that challenge if Finstock challenged you to a showdown? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, <laughs> I always kind of think to it, it could always come down to uh, Finstock pulling sports movies or Van Damme movies or something like that. And that would just be my biggest fear because uh, I would, for one, I, I would know nothing in that category. For two, he'll know everything. Hey, if, if he wants to challenge me, but the man just gave me some shoes. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm bound to his feet, you know. Yeah. He, uh, he's in your he's <laughs> in your good graces right now. Yeah, I understand. That'd be funny if Robert's already taped like four episodes that'll, that'll be airing in like three months. We're just the joke's <laughs> on us right now. For sure. Hopefully he'll tell us off air if that's the case. But... The last thing I want to talk about, and then we will wrap it up, and RB3 can probably provide some insight to this. Brian, I'm sure you have an opinion on it. There are times in these shows where it just gets hijacked from Christian, and Christian looks like he hates Earth. He gets so bummed out, and I thought it was hysterical that Mance and Sasha were clicking so well, but Christian just completely... Um, like phased out of the show and was just staring at the computer. I th- kind of thought it was funny, but does Christian really get that bummed out about it when people kind of go off on tangents, or is he just letting them talk? What's the attitude behind that? Uh, you know, Brian. Brian should should give his thoughts first, and then I'll, I'll chime in after. Brian, what do you think? Look, it's his show. It is Christian's show any way you cut it. And so maybe there's a little bit of that. But Sasha and Mance, I believe, I want to say they've worked together before. I'm, I'm blanking on what that project was, but they've had an established chem- chemistry for quite a while. So it's no surprise to me that they got along well during this segment. RB3, what you got? Uh, I, I just honestly think Christian was tired. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was exhausted. and Oh, was, that's the easy answer. Come on. No, I mean, honest to God, because, I mean, you know, he does Jedi Council that day, movie talk. And then, uh, you know, and we're working on some stuff before the show. And, he, you know, he's still working on the uh, the Schmoes um, miniseries and stuff. So he, he, he does a lot. And I think in that particular moment, because believe me, I, I, was, I was dying, too, when I was reading the the uh the live chat and they're like christian stone christian's laws <laughs> he's he's at another planet and I, the jokes are just funny but I, I honestly do think he was just super tired and he he had a long day had to prepare for derek scene france you know so you know and i cut the man a break yeah I, right. I don't know how he does it I, I really don't like i do one podcast i'm tired for three days <laughs> That's why I try not to bother him. I feel so bad talking to him about the podcast because we always talk about it over the weekend. And I'm like, Dude, this guy's got to be drained like from the entire mm-hmm. week. It's got to be nuts. Just just that interview with C in France alone would wear me out. Just being worried about it, asking the right questions. And anyway, but look, I uh, I like this week. Uh, quite a bit a lot of fun a lot of good things to talk about very very eventful and you know again we've got the ultimate uh schmodown tournament on the horizon it's looking good so anyway i had fun on this podcast rb3 thank you so much for coming on um for the second time i hope that this is not the last time you come on and join us so again thank you for hanging out with us 
pl- plug something. I know you're uh, an aspiring filmmaker. I know you you're on the internet. What what do you want the fans to uh, check out when it comes Thanks, to RB three? Yes, thank you, thank you. And I, I just really I want to give a, a big plug to uh, the new short film I just completed uh, called Go Seek. Uh, it's on YouTube. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, just I think it's just my name, Robert Butler III. And then, um, or you can see me running around in a lot of comment sections, either on the Schmo's channel or whatever. But please, uh, please check out the short film. I, it was, I think, I think, I, I think it was really good. Uh, there's a lot of good people who helped me, um, who helped me do it, and there's a lot of good people who I think uh, deserve some recognition and credit for it. So please check it out. It's on YouTube. It's called Go Seek. Uh, it's a little horror movie. If you like horror, it's only three minutes. So fantastic, awesome. Um, and you're at RB3 Schmoes on Twitter, right? Yeah, or RB3 Schmoes. On, yeah, uh, yeah, RB3 Schmoes on Twitter. Uh, Rob the movie guy on Instagram and I keep meaning to make them all the same but I just don't <laughs> have you ever been have you ever been called R-B-I-I-I <laughs> uh, oh I've never I've never been called that out loud but when, whenever people sometimes when people type my name that's usually that's sometimes how they how they type it <laughs> I, used to play, I used to play RBI baseball a lot back in the day so I just think of RBI a lot uh, right. Don't no, my, hold it against me. My email address is actually uh, my last name and then RBI. So um, that's you know I'm I'm very in tune to what um, you know. It's funny you know before before I even got on the Schmo's uh, show, my nickname in real life was RB3 before that. So for me, is the uh, known as RB3 to Schmoville is has been a nice kind of transition. It's a great nickname. Brian, you have been on top of it when it comes to hard-hitting questions. Where can the people find you on the internet? You guys can follow me, Brian Davids, on Twitter at BDF331. Check out my TV film podcast, Film Schlubs, wherever podcasts are found, as well as filmschlubspodcast.com. Coming up, I've got preacher showrunner Sam Catlin, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul executive producer Melissa Bernstein, And I'm also scheduling Scoot McNary still. Hell yeah. I just started watching Halt and Catch Fire, so I'm pretty excited for that Scoot McNary interview. Well, that's Um, one idea of mine that you've liked, so there you go. There you you go. You know, Brian, you know, and my now celebrity, uh, I was a bit overtaken when uh, it took you a full 24 hours to follow me back on Twitter. So uh, I I was a bit taken by that. You were surrounded by a bunch of porn accounts, so forgive me for <laughs> taking a while to me. So dumb. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> Anyways, you can find me on Twitter at FilmBeefSnell. You can find my Film Schlubs copycat podcast, Film Beef, anywhere you can find podcasts. And I'm also putting stuff up on the YouTube channel. So definitely check out Film Beef YouTube channel. Every podcast slows gear and I'm, goes there, excuse me. And I'm going to be making more videos. We just recorded our Don't Breathe review and we're recapping Mr. Robot. And there's a really cool Harry Potter series coming up that I swear to God, Chris Stuckman took from us. Anyway, thanks so much, guys. We will see you next week on the Smoville podcast. Bye bye. <laughs>